Okay. Can everybody hear me? You can just nod your head if you can hear me. All right, are y'all ready for this? Poetry Electric tonight, La Mama live stream. That's right, we're getting ready to kick it. Powerful words, powerful women, all thanks to Ellen Stewart and her fabulous staff crew. Yes, La Mama rocking and rolling, now hitting it with me or you. All right, in the house, Poetry Electric tonight. We're here, powerful words, powerful women. Glad you could all watch and be in on the action, cause we're all in it together. These dynamic women tonight will be kicking it, kicking some words for you to take with you as we fight the fight. That's right. I'm talking about Eve Packer, Arden Wall, Caroline Banks, Stephanie Blanche Bayer, Danusha Trevino, Tamara Plotnik, Ilka Scobie, Helix Armageddon, Hydri, hat tree, uh huh. They're gonna be bringing it to you. Some powerful words from some powerful women. And we hope that you enjoy our live stream and keep kicking it with us here at La Mama as we try to keep you on board, keeping the creative juices going because we are all in this together. Together. Powerful words, powerful women. Huh. Poetry Electric live stream. All right, are y'all ready for this? Okay, can you hear me? I can start now. Okay, I'm a New York woman. I do what I want. Do not tell me what I cannot and can do. Do not tell me to wear. You know, this is an old piece. <laughs> Long, black, baggy pants. When I want to wear a short, sheer orange PC mini on subway, bus, train, tram, trolley, or any vehicle of choice, that's in moving violation of my volition. Do not tell me what I cannot and can do and do. Not tell me not to bite my nails, color my hair, bike without helmet, give taxi drivers a hard time, peace in my mind, cross against the light white, else is it red, play in the park when flocks swim twice in one day, if only I could eat so much fruit. Do not tell me what I cannot and can do and do not tell me not to talk to strangers, flirt, you know, is an old piece. Network my cleavage, keep my legs crossed and mouth shut, zipped while you are orbiting Saturn. Do not tell me what I cannot and can do. I pay my rent still, con it still, phone, two phones, health club, wish I could get there. 
Yoga sure need my R and R after this urban guerrilla warfare battling the invisible enemy. I light a fire under my own stone or use my phone finger. That's this one. For takeout Ticketron, ha ha. 1-800, do not tell me what I cannot and can do. And do not, especially in this time, say you'll email if you won't call when you don't appear late, make or change plans without consulting promise and cop. Say you love me, I love you, I love. I love you, baby, and get misplaced. Love and about 52, 250, 275, unless you're a senior, and we'll get me on the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, F, D, N, R, J, Z, V, strike the V, M, shuttle, L, unless they're doing construction still 24 7. This is New York. If you love me, baby, go up. And only now am I going to add this tag. This is 323.20. So just this once, I will do whatever you tell me to do. I will wash my hands, wear my face mask if I have one, keep a social distance. This is for you, Jupiter and Ozzy. But stop telling me, we, us. Stop telling me to stop making, stop telling all of us to stop making noise. Thank you. I catch whimpers, delicate canopy of furious nerves, demands the juice of humble compliment, gentler than my bed's pillow, rituals of such pleasures. Catch whimpers, dualistic people, fissures the day with thoughts of sin, Out on thin loin, chapped, ruby mouth experiences the same detaching, craven skin and latex from their interest, acting wounded. Mounting sloth of winter's whistle, frail chalk, white cock, cold bed. Frail chalk fingers gently stroke, manifest in several sorrows. I cannot speak. A shadow shakes the linens as he hums plain notes lays around from the inattention, doubtful, queasiness, commencing natural signals, lingering behind. To comprehend which way to lean, the frozen window influences the intention. Okay. And this is 
the second poem. Imitation ruby flourishing, scentless, maintained by an industrious agrarian. Etymology has no bearing. Your writing will, under all circumstances, be impaired. Yours are the mellow cares to envision while starved, quietude of now. Peacefulness lay over a pruned expression amid the muted red of barren plants. Stalemate authenticity, the smell haunts our footpath. Digging transpires, fullness materializes formally, pink beast among the coarse mane, blood filled, streaked, wet. The flickering stream on the path sided by withdrawn blossoms. Thank you. Hey everybody, thanks for being here. We were a family. Men, forever threatened by us. We, women, they fear our force, the power to birth the newborns. We bring life to the world while they bring war. We are sick of guns that slaughter by the score. He's too bloody to see he's killing his brothers, fathers, sisters, mothers. We were a family. We once respected nature. But we've been hurting mother, taking her by storm. Whipped the wind to flame the green. The fires inflamed all the way to the sea. Where the waters are drowning our humanity. The locker room. <clears throat> Our home's not on fire. What a motherfucking fucker. He collects others' children like coins. thinks he'd save the day. If self-praise was school, he'd have straight A's. Grab him by the dick, I say on my mark. Trump, chill out. It's just locker room talk. Admit it. Fuck you who stole my virginity in your dorm who left me naked, terrified, and torn. Fuck you, who planned my body's invasion. You basked in my stupor, had a fucking vacation.
who is rape. my first poem the second one okay Picking back up with my second poem. <clears throat> the Locker Room. Our home's not on fire. It's melting and burning. Our planet has seams. Carbon dioxide is tearing. While Trump tears the white from the brown, the child from her mother, classic Trump, what a motherfucking fucker. He collects others' children like coins, betraying Kurdish friends because his head's in his groin. Tweets 12,000 times a day, tweets 12,000 times, thinks he's saved the day. If self praise was school, he'd have straight A's. Grab him by the dick, I say on my mark. Trump, chill out. It's just locker room talk. Admit it. Fuck you, who stole my virginity in your dorm, who left me naked, terrified, and torn. Fuck you, who planned my body's invasion. You basked in my stupor, had a fucking vacation. I felt something inside me that hadn't been there. I woke from a dream 
and into a nightmare. I had never said yes, but words didn't matter. You spoke body language. You had the power. I got your message, but it was already too late. Bitch, you are weak and I am strong. Your body's not yours. In my hands, it belongs. Yeah, I got your message, but it was too late. You took the worst advantage one could take. Admit it, motherfucker. It was rape. It was rape. It was rape. A canvas. A tattoo doesn't define me. I define it. This is my body. But my family doesn't approve since Nazis inked us, slaughtered six million Jews. But I'm alive today due to my tribe's bravery, free to be a canvas with art I want to see. I reclaim the designs and thus their power to number us, to suffocate us in death showers. But they lost the war and this world is new. Tattoos are for me now, not for you. The river. I never fit the mold and it gave me a fever. I knew I wasn't them, but I wasn't me either. I suppressed my creativity, quirks, free spirit, because that girl was la weird, loud, different. Yet in hindsight, I'm a roaring river, perfectly bent. Thank you. Seven, eight, sixteen. Can we be forgiven? Can we be held in the light of the disgusted truth we hide behind? Stand on top of, think is real and true and immovable. Can we be remembered for the moments we do not participate? for the times we stand in and for truth. So that maybe, just maybe, it becomes safer to do, you know, safer to tell the truth, safer to recall the moments that have arrived us here, the moments of little integrity and an alliance to the overwhelming trance of fear, false, evidence appearing real. Those ones where we trade our humanity for security or the illusion thereof. How secure is this foundation when it is based in the terror of those perpetrated lies? How secure is a place that rests on the brutalized? My mask. Well, I'm in a complicated love affair with her. She keeps me safe, sane, sane, the seen, unseen. Now, if I take her off, will you feel me? 
will you kill me? I pray you fail me. This one's you see. You represent freedom and truth. She sang to me, awakened me, breath yearning for life and being and letting go in order to be. The evolution is here and it rests in the freedom of truth in we and in the journey of self in me. It alarms me to be honest, deepens me and embarrasses me. I know it's the truth yet have not represented freedom nor truth for myself, you see. The double edge of my own duality, my disconnection from myself and the amnesia of soul, S-O-L, that's we, no me, I mean, must be where the density of your disappointment lies for me, lies. From my adherence to fear and how it lives in my mistruth, it consumes my being, you see. This fear, this doubt, this amnesia of me, I disassociate my me from myself and truth and freedom. So although you see me, I have become but a shadow, a distant memory of me, you see, no longer synonymous with freedom and truth. So thank you for being, you a mirror in this epic story. Allow me to reconnect with freedom. You see, the distance between today, yesterday, and tomorrow has climbed upon itself and disappeared. Once again, I remember you, you see, Freedom Tour. All right. This is You See Part Two. You see, perhaps I popped in just when you needed me, just after the beam broke, only to put out the flames, to catch that one tear streaming down, whole face for three to five minutes, spring clean, sister goddesses, or just to remind you, you can, you see, you can do anything, be anyone, do anything, you see. So take a deep breath, stand tall, gracefully bow out, stomp around in your mind when you and your heart remembers the ugly. You are strong intelligence. A noble queen, king, the entire royal spectrum wrapped up in every royal bit that runs in between. You that force behind creation upon creation. You that frightened little one that needed mother wanted father who finds neither able to supply all that extra that is required for a true sense of security in this peculiar set of institutions. You are afraid of being success for you know all too well it seems to mean a rejection apologize for yourself, you see, or explain yourself to anyone else. Your friends don't need it. Your enemies don't care. The whole bunch of folks in between, I dare to say you needn't show up and explain anything to them either. Dare to run into yourself, you see, instead of from yourself, you see. Enjoy traveling through each beautifully coiled strand, braiding them together, creation in the balance of you. Caress the looking glass that reveals all your ugly layers down to the core till it breaks through crying out, I am. I am your purpose. Honor that, honor that you, you see. You, you dodge in mirrors, no shame, no shade. I do it too, that you, you neglect in conversations because we all too scared to see what's really here. Answer questions meant for only you and share them but in the breath of your stride. Not careless words that bounce off walls and fall to a 
feet, the feet of a world that hears only through movement, action, friction, tension, and then pass into you. Paint a today worth your while and build a moment worth ours. We are us. So let the circle continue. Embrace purpose in our time. This ain't selfish, it's selfless. Though the honesty may make your skin crawl, your flesh panic exposed again for the first time, liberation is in your truth, you see, so take care in unpacking lie by selfish lie. Then breathe easy. When you fall into peace, you see. Not of the temporary kind most are accustomed to, but that peace you cannot escape cause you finally know thyself, you see. Before the hurt of the world bruises and batters your fresh soul, let it fall off. Let it fall all off. Trust yourself so much so that others, others and even your own unfulfilled promises are constant, no more. And they're nothing more than the dirt that falls off of your shoulders. Do not apologize. Let love not be ruined because we are ruled by fear and doubt, you see. Lest this child who still breathes in you survives hating the angst of abandonment. Heal yourself, you see. Be, see, yourself. Thank you. I went to say goodbye to my favorite aunt the night I was to leave my country, Poland, for good. She placed around my neck the way medals are given at the Olympics, a necklace made out of 10 rolls of toilet paper and said, here you go, child. Show those Americans we have our own paper to wipe our asses with. She didn't know. Americans were not aware that in 1981, we used Pravda, a Soviet paper, which means truth in Russian for such needs. It was not an act of political subversion. We did it because Pravda was softer and cheaper than our own Polish daily news. I wasn't leaving my country, family, and everything that was dear to me for toilet paper. I was a student at a university. And one of our professors said to us, cherish these moments, they will be the best years of your life. Well, that filled me with dread. I wanted more from life than memories, more than to be a music teacher in my hometown. And I certainly wasn't ready to get married at 20, although me not having a boyfriend yet caused panic in my family. I came home one day, and my parents invited a couple with their son to introduce me to. My mom said, go get dressed and come meet this nice young man. I got dressed and I climbed up a coal chute towards a tiny window to escape. 
I wanted to escape this feeling of insignificance and being poor, although my family never was. I was listening to Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue, and that music filled me with wildness and a possibility of a much bigger adventurous life. I wanted to learn how to speak English so well that nobody could tell me nothing. This American English, the sounds of which are rounder and thicker than my own, the language that I grew up with. This American English, which while learning later would hurt my jaw from stretching it into so many unaccustomed to me directions. Polish was beautiful but it was quiet, full of nostalgia and history, and it was dragging my soul down. I wanted to live in the US because that was the most powerful country in the world and I wanted to feel powerful. And it had to be New York City, the coolest of them all. This New York, which I met for the first time on the pages of my geography class. The caption underneath the tiny black and white photo of a skyscraper read, New York, city where the buildings go so high, they seem to touch the sky, and the traffic is so dense, it's faster to walk than to take a taxi sometimes. How is that even possible? I could count on my fingers the numbers of cars in my hometown. I wanted to be a New Yorker and know the city as intimately as any good cab driver does. I wanted to jog in Central Park the way Jill Claybor jogged an unmarried woman. I wanted to walk the streets the way Americans walk in a nonchalant way, self-assured, not worrying about their wrinkled clothes, unmatched socks or messy hair. I wanted to leave behind this beige elegance. I still remember the day I got fired from my first American job. It was Burger King. Apparently there was something wrong with my burger. As I was taking off my uniform in the bathroom and crying uncontrollably, the cleaning lady, I don't remember what country she was from, hugged me, wiped away my tears and said, don't worry, honey, you can get a better job at Dunkin' Donuts. And as I was about to leave, she said, better yet, learn how to type. Typing is the future in America. I got a job at a local factory to pay for the classes and the machine to practice on. The classes were at the community college and it was too far for me to make it on time on the bus after work. So I went to the first class and I asked, does anybody live near me? And could you give me a ride? And this young woman with black, straight, shiny hair raised her hand and said, I will. And for the next few weeks, every Tuesday and Thursday, the Italian Anna picked me up in her pink, tiny, cream color Renault. There was a pink plush dog dangling from her rear view mirror. One time as we were on the highway, she suddenly rolled up the windows and without warning screamed so loud as if someone was ripping her skin off without anesthetics. I have never been in the presence of such a sound. Afterwards, she took a deep breath, smiled and said, Nobody speaks English in my family. I have to take care of everything. It's very hard. I could never do that, I said to her. And her response was, well, I'm not letting you out of this car until you do. She passed our exit on the highway. And I was trying to get courage by concentrating on the pink plush dog. But every time Anna counted one, two, three, go, nothing came out of me. Jumping out of Verrazano Bridge would have been much easier task to fulfill. Finally, after one hour of going deep into Long Island, I let out a scream. 20 years of silence released onto LIE. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, Deandra, and everybody at Culture Hub. Really appreciate what you're doing. Thank you, La Mama and Electric for this opportunity. Poets, everybody out there, I dedicate this reading to my mom, Lois. Six shorties for you. Bells, fill me bells. Bells, silent bells toll like buttercups that shriek to nobody's ears. Clappers peek out like stigma frantic to be rung, each a clit of a deed undone. While vines fruitful with dunks cap bulbs mock no particular fool, and red lanterns festoon, uncertain celebration, hot air hallucinations tethered to a single thread. All fabrication on a crash course with the current of light and adrift on films of spectral melt. Alone, blue belt. Wooden goddess. You don't know me, but stare at my hard, brown belly as if it were my brain mocking you. As I stand guard on your shelf from night's yawn till morning winks, while a billion blinks pile up dust stalls over my wooden skin. You might fear or revere my definitive demeanor, my resolve, the way space must curve and arch around my impossible beauty. But stop, please, each day, and hear the music I have told from my root to yours. It resounds in gold, buttery waves over oceans and through guitar strings to the umbilical where life crawled from that mysterious mother to carry your love. Woman as landscape. To lie in a garden like a stealth fold of landscape, this human pulsing flesh, mountain range, small mirror to magnanimous tree flocks masses. To know that elbow, our momentary landing pad for ladybugs, while the fringy nerves of legs singe at the sun's indifferent grace. Even as umbilical falls, bravely to reunite with earth, grass and clover go giddy over the interloper whose old factory makes mincemeat of meaty peat and petals in obscene pinks. To party silently whose screaming scarlet skirts, yellow tongues, indigo winks mock the gray cap of clouds. Still, pond-hued eyes humble, at the infinity of green. Portrait of a mother on the eve of spring break. Through the parlor window, I witness. My last umbilical issue, load her distilled yet spindly wonder into a hired car and stream away. Trailing behind a long, buried yet noodling crevasse, an invisible emptiness threading my core that she began spinning since her womb exit 15 summers back. That holy filament hooked onto her suitcase wheels, stretching my hollowness past prospects. I stand behind these wafery walls of skin, vacant of her glamour, grace, gall. This empty arc of bones, pressing against my own architecture, prayers, poems, partners, so as not to cave under the weight of values ill instilled, quests unshared, talk too tacit, bonds unbound. Like Demeter, I forfeit color and verb with her departure, though blossoms promise looms a day away, and the charge is to view flamboyantly all. Turn of my Persephone, I will. 
spring break. Through a glass brightly. Industrial roses, a city sprouted from corn, upturned industry. You think you know this world and its honeycombed inhabitants. Well, what do your antennae miss? Scrambled weather, prisms where space once was, a denatured rainbow, feathered, unfurled, a general lack of gravity, the presence of severe frivolity, if you don't mind crunching on fish gravel in your tank of reality. Last one. Violet eye of the night. Dream whisper through the velvet eye of night. Let all your ghosts be joyful. Let all your angels be fools. In a town where the towers sway o'er dancing hills, stars will explain it all. Let the cosmos reign. You have no choice. Taxi. Taxi. Once upon a time, checker cabs darted across bridges faster than a speeding express train. 1969, not the moment for teeny boppers, mini skirted, stoned on a midnight local, nervously riding home. In the cab's darkness, you were safe and cosseted. This was in another century before crosstown crawls and Broadway blockage. Up until 1994, the cabbie patiently waited until the female inserted her key in the door. Call it chivalry, safety, street security. Today, few insouciant waves hail the yellow fleet, slowly strangulated by greedy businessmen, taxis, fleets of new cars that we hail with our ever-present phones. The driver will not, cannot leave the motor running for a quick score two flights up. The back seat will never overflow with bodega blooms bought on a sudden whim. Speaking of which, does anyone ever have sex in an Uber? Thank you, lovely New York City cabbie who returned my bag, crammed with cash, a pearl necklace, a fist, and thank you, Pervo cabbie, who drove me to the old Navy Yard, scared me to hell, but then unexpectedly decided not to rape me, but silently drove me home through empty Brooklyn streets. Thank you, drivers, poets, immigrants, musicians. An app. Oh, yellow taxi, killed off by greed and technology. For decades, your presence brightened city streets. First, they turned you green if you dared to leave Manhattan. And now you are going priced to impossible heights, though none of this lucre reaches the driver. Soon you will be a nostalgic footnote, like gambles, egg creams, village voice and subway tokens. We are left with Uber via Lyft, acronyms for anonymity. Still we have the crumbling, bumbling MTA, lurching through aging tunnels, but eventually will get us there. Next, an opera that I saw before we went into total uh, insulation, Costi Fantute. When worldly chaos overwhelms, Russia manipulates democracy's demise. A plague hopscotches across continents, lands in my Lombardian walled garden. As if paper masks protect against Corona. Thank you, Mozart, for this divine melodic distraction operatic extravaganza of scheming lovers, men as usual orchestrating plots, testing fidelity, equating one night stands with mortal sin. 
women doomed to be ingenue victims or saucy perpetrator. Save your fairy tales for the kids. Everlasting love can bend to transgression. In 24 hours, an election can be stolen. A virus can transmute and spread. A heart can break, mend, and cease to beat. May no woman ever die of love. Casi Fantute. And last, Corona time. The full worm moon, Robin's return to feast on emerging earthworms. The peregrine moment when lunar transit is closest to Earth, our troubled planet where a pandemic simmers. Told to avoid crowds, I skip art fairs, still ride the subway to school, classrooms awash in pumped sanitizer assiduously used by the brilliant children. A stray cough or muffled sneeze buried in itinerant elbows, resounding viral doom. Jet-setting virus sweeps from congested heart of an eastern city to the flat, rich plains of Pinora Padana. Suburban contagion circles my hometown. Today, the sun rose an hour later. Daylight savings time ceaselessly springs us forward into Corona time, the crown that no one covets. Thank you and stay safe. Sojourner truth in decibels. I let the pull of life tow me out to the vestibule. I'm at the door of my own house. Ran my fingertips across my lips to touch doubt. I taste blood. See the foyer clearly. I see myself really. Reflecting off the mirrors, quiet rooms are kind of eerie. Shadows fanning like avalanches. I feel the weight of past circumstances. I'm necromancing, it's not romantic. I'm on a canvas with the past and the future. Hands brace the floor, show my striations and sutures. Naked in my nudeness. Vacant and secluded. Scan limbs, wind, deconstruct the rubrics. I'm in a pool of red ink, laying in the hubris, but only just enough to shift inertia to some movement, stopping the entombment, core muscles moving, spine arches forward, feel the pain and all the bruising. Cause I've been working hard. I've been working hard. 
I know why the cage bird sings. Even when its ravaged soul is in the middle of its own Arab spring. Tattered rings of pseudo growth on tree stumps of hope. I'm soaked in the sweat of my years, the sweat of my ghost from. Fell on a post in this mind, Jim Shabari rope wrapped around my throat from the tears formed in silence. I. Shift my shoulder blades, I'm feeling a roving rage. Bones stack, contract like Jenga blocks before they cave. I'm sitting in an open grave. It's subtle. Crack my neck to feel the prisons in my muscles. I escape from Alcatraz. I won't escape the challenge of the blast waves demolish all my parts. I'm now a salvager. Fix my posture, postulate the meaning. It's raining stardust, I've arrived and yet I'm leaving. Skin glistens, wounds on my wrist. I've got a gun on my tongue and a blade in my kiss. Cause I've been working on it. I've been working on it. I've been working on the fresh road Cause I've been working on it. I've been working on it. I've been working on a fresh road Cause I've been working on it. I've been working on it. I've been working on a fresh road Cause I've been working on it. I've been working on it. I've been working on a fresh road for life. For life. For life. So I am um Felix C. Armageddon, and I wrote that piece after battling my way back from severe illness. And one of the things that helped me get through that period of time in my life was an affirmation. And if you've come to any of my performances, then you know this is something that I, this, this phrase is something that I sometimes do with audiences and it feels appropriate right now. So for all of you at home, listening, viewing, I encourage you to say this phrase along with me at this point. And it's a simple phrase. It's actually, I love you, keep going. And you know, sometimes we can be our own biggest bully. Sometimes we can be really unkind to ourselves with what we're saying. And this phrase has gotten me through many quiet moments and still gets me through quiet moments today. So I'm going to say it three times. I encourage you wherever you are to say it too. And I'm not saying it to me. It is a conversation you're having with yourself in this moment. And after we say it, then that will conclude my performance. I love you. Keep going. 
I love you. Keep going. I love you. Keep going. Thank you. Okay, powerful words, powerful women. Yeah, thank you so much for being there tonight with us. That's right, streaming live. Powerful words, powerful women. La Mama's Poetry Electric in the house. Keep that creativity coming. Keep it going. We're going to keep it going and keep bringing it to you. So look for us. We are all in this together. As I said, we are all in this together. And La Mama is with you all the way, all together. Yeah.